kind of getting going of an overview. Overview: natural concrete, sidewalks, driveways, those type of surfaces to remove the oils, algae, and mildew. If they need to be etched, a light muriatic acid wash is perfectly fine. All right, that's an overview on concrete. Roof tile. Usually the prep on that is to remove mold and algae. Soft wash, do not harm pressure wash. You don't want to ruin or hurt the roof tile. Always soft wash those substrates. Using a surface cleaner and flat work. Again, do not sit stationary too long or you're gonna leave a surface burn, a mark from the stationary book from being set there too long. So keep it moving. Um, roof tile, soft wash, concrete, regular pressure wash. Do not use a turbo tip on either one of those ever because again, you're gonna you're gonna damage the, the, the surface and give a treat. Uh, clay clay pavers. Again, soft wash, never hard wash. The reason why you put an impregnator on those is real simple. You want them to breathe. So if there's hydrostatic pressure, a lot of moisture, it won't get trapped into the clay paper. It won't make it pop. Natural stone, soft wash. Pick the cleaner. In most cases, it's already been down a while. Degrease it with a total clean. You want to prep it with rust stains or efflorescence. The profile or condition than the total prep. That would be the green one. So red to degrease, green to prep and condition. And then the one in the middle will be more for travertine. Travertine there, an overview is going to clean, it's going to etch, and it's going to remove the bolded algae spores and degrease all in once. Travertine, I would go full strength, though without diluting. If it's a garage floor, I go maybe 50-50. You don't have to go full strength. But it depends on the substrate and the surface you're going to condition. It's going to determine which one of these products you're going to use or a combination of. Them. All set. We're going to go over with a little bit of water to show you a couple of things. Let's see if you can grab this one. This one's already been treated. See that water? See the concrete already been treated? Untreated, treated. That's how you, you know you do this one. Right there. Over here on the natural stone. Untreated, treated. That's invisible. Very unique technology, by the way. The invisible is very, very unique. It's not your saloxane fake type of impregnation. In the comments. You know, not quite drier yet, but I'm going to put a little water on it anyways. Untreated, treated. Untreated, treated. Now, curing of these products, even though they become hydrophobic in moments, I mean, we're talking in minutes, they're still reacting, so they're still curing. So foot traffic, you walk on this in an hour. Vehicular traffic, I like to at least wait 24 to 48 hours minimum. But it is still carrying up to 72 hours. So if I were to get a bunch of rain right now, and I put this uh, surface down, just like yesterday, we sealed those pavers. We got rain 10 minutes of monsoon for an hour and a half, not two hours. It just kept raining. And that was, again, the weatherman said 10, 20%. He's full of shit. But that's, that's what happened. What it help? What what will affect any of these products is when you get too much moisture too soon, you can have issues with it bonding, penetrating, turning white. In this case, it's just going to affect the longevity. So if I put this down and it gets rain in an hour, then it may affect how long it's going to last. If it doesn't rain till tomorrow, that means it's going to last long. So anytime you do any kind of sealing of any substrate, whether it's film forming, non-film forming, you know, pay attention to Mother Nature. We have a reptile. Play papers. Again, this has only been on for maybe 20, 30 minutes. Best results is to try to get 24 hours if possible. Um, the longer the, the, the water doesn't get on, the longer it's going to last. The more it penetrates, the longer it's going to last. Recoats. When do you know to recoat? Well, obviously, when it starts to grow mold and algae and or doesn't bead water, that's time to recoat. So it could be two years, it could be five years, depending on how much penetration you got and how much product went in there, it became part of the structure. All right. 
Any other things you guys got to think of as far as overview? Again, cost per square foot, a natural stone, remember you're only gonna get 100, 150 square foot out of a gallon of it. So that's gonna double your cost per square foot over travertine. Travertine is gonna get doubled square footage. So on natural stone, it may cost me 35 to 50 cents a square foot to apply. On travertine, we're gonna cut that in half. On root, you're using the 160 one, which is the non-stained guard, that's gonna be less expensive. So a five gallon bucket, it's gonna probably treat up to a thousand square feet. So if that's gonna be a thousand square foot, it's not gonna cost you 10, 15 cents a square foot. So that's gonna be about your average cost. And coverage is gonna vary on the structure of the substrate you're applying it to. Um, I think that's it guys, as far as today, a little bit easier than yesterday, a little shorter. Uh, any questions, always contact us here at the office. We're, Again, socially distanced, we can go, we'll go to job sites. Um, we'll do you know, whatever we can do to help you guys out. Uh, we're here for that. Um, we have two more classes coming up next month, sometime in August. Ernie and them, and Ike and Mark, we're posting it on the website soon. Um, we'll be doing also some decorative Texturese 3500, which is the, uh, the, the cool product over here, which is a roll on, uh, spray on kind of a combination product you can get very decorative with. Keep in mind that product was just used at Kennedy Space Center two years ago, over 100,000 square feet. And they've already had 3.2 million people that have been to that park since the day they opened it up, or they reopened it with that application. So both of these products have what's called IR pigments, reflective. So it's gonna lower the temperature. We're in July right now, the 24th. Let's say the surface temperature gets up to 150 in a dark color. It's gonna lower it 20 to 25 degrees. So it's gonna take 10 to 12% off of the substrate temperature. It'll also make it last 50% longer because it's not absorbing the heat. This will be one of the classes we'll be doing upcoming. Something like this finish right here where my foot is, is a salt pepper kind of finish. And it's done with a roller and a sprayer, a hopper gun combination. So that'll be coming up in August also. Um, guys, I think, as they say, that's it folks. <laughs>